Welcome to this video. We're going to talk about quick check multiple choice. Uh, this is the chapter 14, Measuring the Cost of Living. This is a book of Gregory Mankiw, Principles of Economics. So the first question says, the consumer price index measures approximately the same economic phenomenon as nominal GDP, real GDP, the GG GDP deflator, or the unemployment unemployment rate. So first, let's go through all the definition. Remember, the nominal GDP is the production of goods and services valued at a specific uh, current prices. So if you are taking, for example, a nominal GDP of 2019, you're going to value all the goods and services to the price of 2019. The real GDP is exactly the same just value at the cost and price, so it means as a year base. So you're going to value all the goods and services produced by a certain uh, base of year. And the unemployment rate is the percentage of the labor force that is unemployed. And remember, the consumer price index is an indicator that measures um, in some way the the value of a determined basket uh, in different in different years. So then this is kind of way a measure of prices. So then the GDP deflator is, remember, the measure of price level calculated as the ratio of nominal GDP to real GDP times 100. So then, the, the concept that is really similar to the GDP deflator or to the consumer price index better is the GDP deflator. Second, the largest component in the basket of goods and services used to compute the CPI is. So which is going to be the higher weight for this basket? Food and beverages, housing, medical care, apparel. So this is the pie, uh, which it comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, where housing definitely is uh, weighted with 41% as the um, as a part or as a proportion of the CPI basket, so it should be B housing. Three, if a Pennsylvania gun manufacturer raises the price of rifles it sells to the U.S. Army, its price hikes will increase. Then, both CPI and GDP deflator. Neither the CPI nor the GDP deflator, the CPI but not the GDP deflator, or the GDP deflator but not the CPI. So, first, when we are talking about guns that they are going to be sold to the US Army, so we're talking about the government expenditure. So, then naturally, it goes directly to the GDP. And then, if it goes to the GDP, Naturally, this is going to be in the GDP deflator as well. However, in the basket, hopefully, we don't have this kind of article to the, a normal consumer. I guess that a normal American will not buy a gun. I hope so. So for this reason, this is not part of consumer basket. So then we are talking about the GDP deflator, but not the CPI. Four, because consumers can sometimes substitute cheaper goods for those that have risen in price, the CPI overstates inflation, the CPI understates inflation, the GDP deflator overstates inflation, or the GDP deflator understates inflation. So naturally, the consumers, when you have this substitution effect, you're going not to face this change of price. If you consume and you value uh, in the same way uh, apples and bananas, and the apple price rise, what is considered in the CPI, for example, and you're going to substitute that good for bananas, naturally, in some way, the CPI is not taking all the thing, because it, it's representing an increase when, at the end of the day, the consumer doesn't care and can buy another product. So then, the CPI sometimes can overstate 
inflation, for example, in that case. The other five, if the consumer price index is 200 in 1980, so here we have CPA, CPI 1980, 200, and 300 for today, 2019, then 600 in 1980 has the same purchasing power as today. So then here we have the answers. So remember the question that we developed during the chapter, that the amount in today's dollars is exactly the same as the amount in year T dollars times the ratio of the price level today over the price level in that year. So then the amount in, dollar in, in today's dollars should be exactly equal to the amount in year T dollars. So this year T is 1980. So it should be 600 times 300 over 200. This is naturally 1.5. So then we proceed with the multiplication and we get 900. So naturally it should be D900. Last, uh, you deposit 2000 in a saving account and a year later you have 2100 Meanwhile, the consumer price index rises from 200 to 204 In this case, the nominal interest rate is and the real interest rate is So those are the answers So let's start to clarify or to put like to set uh, the, the question So then we have the initial value, which is exactly 2000. You have the final value, which is 2100. You know that the CPI 1 is 200 and CPI 2 is 204. You know that you can get the inflation with the change of CPI, which is provided by CPI 2 minus CPI 1 over CPI 1. So you, you just replace the value and then you have 204 minus 200 over 200. Then you end up with 2%. So this is the value of the inflation. Then what is the nominal rate? The nominal rate should be natural the change between these two values, which is provided by the final value minus initial value over initial value. So you just replace and then you get at the end of the day 5%. So then you have already the nominal rate. What about the real interest rate? Remember, as we defined throughout the chapter, the real interest rate should be nominal interest rate minus inflation rate. So you already have both. So 5 minus 2 is exactly equal to 3. So then we can finish with the value D5 and 3. I, uh, I, ha I hope that you have enjoyed, you have learned, you have improved the knowledge of this uh, chapter and see you next video. Subscribe and thumbs up if you like it. Hopefully thumbs down is not allowed. Okay, thank you so much for having me another time. Bye bye.